Good morning, everyone. Pastor Tommy McMurtry back again with the Spirit of Liberty broadcast. We appreciate you tuning in this morning. We hope you get a blessing from this special broadcast. If you haven't heard us yet, we're a new broadcast on WSDR AM 1240. We are every Sunday from 915 to 945. I'm the pastor of the Liberty Baptist Church in Rock Falls, Illinois. And if you ever get a chance, make sure you come out and visit us. Check out our website, GiveMeLibertyBaptist.com. Or if you miss one of these programs, you can listen to the whole thing and watch it on YouTube, on our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash GiveMeLibertyBaptist. And this Sunday, I am joined again with Pastor Joe Major of the Faith Baptist Church in Violet, Louisiana. He was with us last week as we discussed the subject of Once Saved, Always Saved. And at Liberty Baptist Church, we teach that Bible doctrine of once saved, always saved. And if you've never heard that before, what that means is basically when a person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and when they receive that free gift of salvation, we believe that they can never, ever lose that salvation. We do not believe there is anything that a person can do to earn their salvation. It's a free gift. And once you receive that free gift, we believe there is nothing that you can do that can make you lose that gift and there unfortunately many people disagree with that and we went through an article last week that was in the uh, local church directory that's put out by Sauk Valley Media it was an article trying to debunk once saved always saved and so we went through there and we used uh, looked at every scripture he used and we showed how he intentionally I mean, just deceived and misused scriptures showing that none of those verses taught that a person can lose their salvation. And so we're going to do some more of that today. But before we do that, uh, something about Pastor Joe Major is uh, he's done some documentaries before. He did a documentary a while back about the Schofield Bible and uh, called Schofield, a legacy of works showing the uh, dangerous teachings that are taught in the Schofield Bible, a great documentary. And he's going to be working on another documentary or he is right now on Calvinism. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And we reject Calvinism here also at Liberty Baptist Church as uh, well as pastor major. And something you need to understand about Calvinism is they have, a doctrine of once saved, always saved, as they call it, that is an absolute counterfeit version of once saved, always saved. And so, Pastor Major, if you could explain to the audience um, the Calvinist version of once saved, always saved, and how it's different from what we actually teach on once saved, always saved. Sure. Well, the Calvinist version of once saved, always saved is called Perseverance of the Saints, one of their points of Calvinism. And in Perseverance of the Saints, they believe that basically you will endure unto the end if you are actually saved. So, and what they're saying is they're not saying that you will be perfect and without sin, but rather that if you do sin, you may fall into it, but you're going to come back, you're going to do right, you're going to live right, you're going to do the works, you're going to do the right things and so forth, and you are going to basically be a Christian the rest of your life and be a disciple of Christ until the time that you die. And so therefore, this perseverance of the saints, they truly don't believe in once saved, always saved, because how can you know if you are actually saved, if you have to endure until the end? And so you don't actually know that you're saved until the time that you die and you have endured unto the end. And so it's completely just a, a false doctrine. They base it off of Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And they take that completely out of context. Because if you actually go read that passage, it's not talking about uh, enduring unto the end to be saved as far as spiritually. You know, one thing we have to understand when it comes to the Bible is the word saved is not always talking about spiritual salvation. Sometimes it's talking about, you know, just the flesh being spared, the flesh being saved. 
which is the case there in Matthew 24. We're dealing with the end times and dealing with the timing of the rapture. And so what it is saying is that if you endure through the tribulation, through the persecution and everything that's taken place during that time period, that if you make it to the end of the tribulation, that you are going to be saved. And how are you going to be saved from tribulation? Well, the rapture is going to take place and you're going to be taken up with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you will be saved from the tribulation if you endure unto the end. And so that's the, the answer to their false doctrine there. Amen. And you know what's amazing about that too is how they can take that one verse out of context and then just build a whole false doctrine around that. And the truth is, once saved, always saved, or eternal security. I mean, that is the gospel. And knowing that we're saved, and the only reason we can know we're saved is if we are trusting in the work of Christ. And when you look at their perseverance of the saints or their version of once saved, always saved, a person can never know for sure if they're saved. Their, their evidence of their salvation is going to be based on their works. And the truth is, when it comes to our works, we don't know how we're going to end this thing. So the truth is, you never can know that you're saved if you're you know, true to Calvinism and what it teaches. And so I just find it very offensive and revolting that they call that perseverance of the saints once saved, always saved. I think it's very deceiving and misleading, and it gives a bad name to those who actually teach a real eternal security. So, uh, but anyway, I can't wait to uh, see that documentary. It's going to be great, and it's going to get a lot of people fired up, I'm sure, as did the uh, documentary against Schofield. So anyway, uh, but uh, what we're going to do this time on today's show, we want to just go through more scriptures uh, that people use to try to debunk once saved, always saved. Because I made the claim last week that there is no verse in the Bible that teaches you can lose your salvation. Nobody ever could lose their salvation. Nobody ever will lose their salvation. There are people who believe that we have eternal security in this dispensation, but they didn't have it in the Old Testament and they won't have it in the tribulation. And that is also a false teaching. Salvation has always been eternal from day one. And so this particular article I want to read, this one is put out on JW.org. This is something the Jehovah's Witnesses put out. And so uh, let me read a little bit of this. And uh, we'll kind of go through a little bit of time. We're not going to have time to get through this whole thing. They use a lot of scriptures in this. And all of them are so easy to show that they are misusing them. But we're going to get to as many as we can in this half hour. So first off, the article says, um, you know, the question is, you know, does the Bible teach once saved, always saved? And their answer is no, it does not teach the doctrine of once saved, always saved. A person who has gained salvation by faith in Jesus Christ can lose that faith and the salvation that comes with it. The Bible says that maintaining faith requires great effort and a hard fight, Jude 3, verse 3 and 5. Early Christians who had already accepted Christ were told, keep working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, Philippians 2.12. So, Pastor Major, what do you have to say about that first section right there? Yeah, so they say that, you know, a person can be saved and then, uh, you know, basically stop believing and thereby lose their salvation. And, you know, right off the bat, I don't believe that somebody who is actually saved is going to actually stop believing the gospel. He may backslide, fall into sin, get out of church and so forth. But I don't believe he would ever stop believing the gospel. But theoretically, what if a person did do that? And what if a person did stop believing? Well, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, it says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. And so that would be the answer to that right there is the Bible tells us, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. The Bible tells us in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. So if God promised us eternal life, we do what the Bible says we have to do to be saved. Well, then God is never going to renege on that promise. He's never going to take that promise back. He is going to abide faithful. And then, of course, they try to quote uh, Jude chapter 
uh, chapter 1, verses 3 and 5, to uh, prove their point. They say that the Bible says that we have to maintain faith. And maintain faith requires great effort, and it is a hard fight, which is ridiculous to use that chapter. The Bible says in the book of Jude, chapter uh, 1, verse 3, it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares. It's funny how they want to uh, just leave this verse out and just use verses 3 and 5, but they take this verse 4 out right in the middle. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And so that chapter, Jude chapter 1, is a parallel passage with Second Peter chapter 2. Both chapters are talking about false prophets and dealing with false prophets. That false prophets are men that although they know the truth, they know what the word of God says, they have never actually believed what the Bible says. So it's not that they have lost their salvation. They were never saved in the first place. And so that verse there is uh, making it plain that we are to contend for the faith. We are to fight against the false prophets by preaching the truth of the word of God so that people can actually believe the truth. So that's what that's dealing with. You know, right there in that passage of scripture. And then was there another passage they used? They use Philippians 2.12, right? Mm -hmm. That's a common yeah. one that a lot of people use. And you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But if you actually go to that passage again and just look at what the Bible says, it says in verse 9, wherefore God, and by the way, it's funny that Jehovah Witnesses would use this passage because they want to make it all about you know, uh, Jehovah, exalt the name of Jehovah. But if you go back in this passage, it says in verse 9, Wherefore God hath also ex highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So it's funny they leave that out. When it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ, God hasn't exalted the name of Jehovah. He exalted the name of Jesus above every name. And then, of course, it goes on to say, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And again, the Bible is not telling us that we have to do works in order to get saved or do works to keep our salvation. The Bible tells us that we are kept by the power of God, not kept by our own power. And what it is talking about, you think about this, you know, if you are trying to, <clears throat> if you're trying to, you know, be healthy and so forth, what do you do? You go to a gym and you work out. So because we are saved, we're going to work out our salvation. And again, it's not, I don't know salvation. I think we're talking about more in the physical sense because the word salvation, again, does not always apply to spiritual salvation. It can apply to physically being saved. So work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So if you don't want your life to be destroyed, if you want to have the blessings of God, if you want to, you know, have God bless you in your life, then you have to work out by keeping God's word, keeping his commandments, being a disciple of God, continuing in his word. But again, that has nothing to do with spiritual salvation. Yeah, that's it's so interesting, too, how when you look at all these passages that anybody ever uses, when you start reading the verses around it, you look at the context. It always, you know, proves these people are just ignorant or frauds. And I was wondering if you would notice how they left out verse four in Jude, because if yeah. you just read verse three and five by itself, I guess you can make it mean whatever you want. It's still a stretch. But when you see verse four too, it's so clear. It's talking about, you know, contending for the faith, meaning we've got to 
fight against false doctrine about yeah. salvation. This has nothing to do with us keeping our own salvation or our own faith. And so, and it's interesting too that they leave that verse out since these are people who creep in. And I mean, our, these are people we are contending with, you know? So I, I yep. thought that was, I thought that was very interesting and it could be verse four might be cut out of their Bible. Like many verses are, and the Jehovah's witness, they use a messed up version of the Bible. And for those of you that aren't familiar uh, with uh, our church and our beliefs yet, we are 100% King James on everything. And all these articles I'm finding against one saved, always saved. They're always using other versions of the Bible. And there's because, and even those versions of the Bible don't always teach you can lose your salvation. Some of them might, but the King James definitely does not. And we, if you ever hear us referring to another version, it's because we're reading somebody else's work. All right. And we are usually about to debunk it. We're 100% King James here. But uh, here's another section that they do where it says Bible verses that disprove the teaching of once saved, always saved. And it says the Bible warns against serious sins that will keep a person from entering God's kingdom. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 and Galatians 5, 19 through 21. And it says if salvation could not be lost, such warnings would be meaningless. Instead, the Bible shows that someone who has been saved can fall away by returning to a practice of serious sin. For example, Hebrews 10, 26 states, if we practice sin willfully after having received the accurate knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins left. And then it also mentions Hebrews 6, 4, and 6, and 2 Peter 2, 20, and 22. So we obviously aren't going to have time to go through all these verses, but let's look, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that they mention, verse 9, because it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And I'd like to just point this out. Now, I'll turn it over to you, Pastor Major. But if you look at what he's been talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he's been talking about going to uh, be judged by the unsaved, by the unjust. And he's saying, why would you go to lost people for judgment? Why wouldn't you go into the church? And then he's reminding them of what kind of people are out there in the world. You know, these are the type of people, the adulterers, the murderers, the, you know, all he's naming off all these terrible sins. And he's saying, and such were some of you, basically saying you were a part of this group at one time. You know how wicked these people are. But everybody forgets this part here when it says, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the spirit of our God. So the truth is, while some of us have probably done some of these sins, we have received Christ's righteousness when we got saved. So therefore, we are not these things. You know, we we have imputed righteousness, which is, with, which is something they don't understand. And what they do, then they take this passage and they make it about who's going to heaven and who's not going to heaven when that's not what the main idea of the passage is talking about. So what are your thoughts on that passage? Yeah, absolutely. So I agree with you 100%. It says in verse 11 there, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So we're not justified or sanctified in the eyes of God by the things that we do. And, you know, this is something that Calvinists misunderstand as well, that when it comes to the doctrine of sanctification, you know, it, that is another word in the Bible that you can't just take it every time you find it and apply it to spiritual salvation. For example, when we pray over our food, the Bible tells us that that food is sanctified by the word in prayer. Also, think about this in the uh, Old Testament. You know, Moses got in trouble because he failed to sanctify God in the eyes of the people. And so, you know, obviously God had no need of salvation. So that word sanctify is a word 
that yes, it applies to salvation in some places, other places it does not. So we want to take the context of what it's talking about there. But in this passage, yes, we're talking about salvation, but notice we're not sanctified by what we do. We're sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Bible tells us in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, by the way, verse 14, it says, for by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And so when we get to heaven, if I am saved, you know, God doesn't look at me and see all of my sin and see me as a sinner. No, he sees me as somebody who's been saved, sanctified. I am perfected forever. Not saying that in my flesh right now I'm perfect, but my spirit has been per has been perfected. My spirit has salvation. My spirit has been made alive, has been quickened by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible makes it plain that it is no more I that sin, but sin that dwelleth in me, the Bible says. And so our spirit has been perfected. So when we get to heaven, we're not going to be looked at as the drunkard or the reviler, the extortioner. But you know what? Those who think their salvation is by their works. Well, guess what? That's what you are. You're one of those things in that list. And you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But those who are saved, it's not our righteousness. It's his righteousness that has been given and applied to us. Absolutely. And it, and that said so that last verse 11, it's key when it says you're justified in the name of our Lord Jesus. And he's saying yep. that in the context of you all are named with Jesus Christ. So you know what? You should judge things amongst those who are named with Jesus Christ versus those who who are named with the unjust of the world, you know, and you used to be from that crowd, but you're not anymore. You've been sanctified by Jesus Christ. You know, you've received his righteousness. Therefore we ought to judge matters amongst ourselves in the church. That's the teaching there, but it's amazing how people will take different things in here, just pull it out of those verse, never looking at context. And it absolutely just destroys, you know, it destroys, you know, the, if you look at the whole passage, it will destroy all the false teaching that comes with it. And then Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it basically says a lot of the same things, but I like how it mentions in verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest and it names off a lot of these terrible sins. And the Bible says, you know, that if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That makes it very clear that a saved person still has the flesh and we're capable of doing the works of the flesh but when we do you know we're going to be judged in the flesh you know and but at the end of the day when it comes to actual salvation when the bible talks about salvation who's going to heaven who's not going to go to heaven it's not who has achieved righteousness on their own it's who's received the imputed righteousness of jesus christ yeah. and galatians teaches that as clear as any other book in the bible so to see people take Galatians 5, 19 through 21 and just use those verses by themselves to prove that a person is not going to be saved uh, if they do those things, it once again just shows ignorance of the scripture as a whole. And I find that very frustrating. And then they used in that same section, Hebrews 10, 26. Uh, but we, we, and we don't have time to go through a lot of that. I want to hit this last point. But uh, let, this, let me read this last scripture because we uh this last section we covered this scripture last week but i think this is worth repeating because i can't believe how many people use this verse to prove that you can lose your salvation it just is so easy to prove that this verse has nothing to do with salvation but the last section they had says um oh, i'm looking at the wrong spot it says only when death was imminent did paul uh, did the apostle paul feel that his salvation was assured. 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8, where he said, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, I kept the faith. You know, he and, and so that's the verse they're referring to. It says, earlier in his life, he recognized that he could still miss out on salvation if he gave in to fleshly desires. He wrote, and this passage is hard for me to read because they butchered the scripture so bad, but it says, I pummel my body and lead it as a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself should not become disapproved somehow. And that's 1 Corinthians 9.27. And so he's what they're saying in this section 
is earlier in Paul's ministry, he was saying that it was possible for him to lose his salvation, you know, because he, he, the King James says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. And they say that means he could lose his salvation. And we showed last week how that passage is not saying you can lose your salvation. It's just he's trying, you can't, but you can lose your rewards. And the reward he wanted in this passage, if you read the whole chapter, he wanted to win people to Christ. And if he's going to go, he didn't want to go and offend people in a way. Otherwise, he might be cast away or rejected by them and fail to win them to Christ. That's what he was talking about. But then they'll take that, because in 2 Timothy 4, it looks like he's assured of his salvation, but they'll say that's because he was almost about to die. That is just so foolish and such a butchering of the scriptures. And then they go to Philippians 3, 12, and it says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I am also, I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. We've only got a few minutes left, but do you have any thoughts on that passage right there? Well, I mean, I completely agree with everything you already said. In the previous passage, of course, was talking about being a, a castaway not from salvation, but from those that you are preaching the word of God to. You know, Paul also said that he was all things to all men. And so he wanted to be able to take the gospel to, to people, to preach the word of God to them and, uh, and not be cast away from those people. And that's an important thing, you know, with us as the people of God, with preachers. When we go out, we go soul in, we take the gospel to people. You know, we want to make sure we do it in the right way where we don't just, you know, offend people right off the bat. And, you know, they just reject everything you're saying because of how you are saying it. And so I think that's kind of what he's talking about there. That he's not going to be a castaway of those people, not of salvation. Absolutely. And yeah, so everything these people have to do to try to disprove once saved, always saved, they have to take a scripture all by itself fail to look at context, misuse it, misapply it. That's all they can do. In this passage in Philippians 3, I, I find it so funny that they use this because once again, read the verses before, read the verses after. You know, in verse 11, it says, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And people use that verse to say, well, you know, you've got to achieve that resurrection of the dead. You've got to be good enough to achieve that. But I like what he says after that. He says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. What I think he's talking about there is he's just saying, listen, this resurrection of the dead, I believe all saved people are going to participate in it. I believe they're all, everyone who's saved is going to rise again. We're going to have a body like Christ one of these days. And so right now we should be striving to be like Christ. Now I have not attained being like Christ, but I have been apprehended or I, I will receive that body like Christ through Jesus, through Jesus and his work. And so when he's saying, you know, I, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, that when I receive that body like Christ, I will have received that through what Jesus Christ did. He did it for me, but that doesn't need to stop me in the meantime of trying to do it myself. And we should sanctify ourselves. We should try to be like Christ. We'll never completely get there, but one of these days we will get there by the work of Jesus Christ when he changes our vile body in the meantime, we just do our best, and but we trust ultimately in what Jesus Christ did. So we're all out of time, but I appreciate everyone listening. I hope this was a blessing to you. And folks, if you're not being taught once saved, always saved, you need to look for another church. This is the most important thing 
Thank God we can never lose our salvation. So thank you for listening. I hope this was a blessing. Be back next week and listen to the Spirit of Liberty broadcast by Liberty Baptist Church. God bless. Thank you very much.